from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hello and welcome to this week's Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. wow. Um, it's our third week in isolation. So we're No, in- wait a minute. No, no, no. It's been about three months, hasn't it? <laughs> no, Jane, it's been three weeks in terms of the radio show. We've done the radio show three times in isolation. But the payoff to this idea is that it's our third time in isolation. But guess what, James? What? It's what how many shows do you think we've done? All together? Yeah. Since we've started? Yes. Is it 400? Is it 800? Yeah. <laughs> it feels <laughs> like it. But I believe this is our 200th episode of the Wow Report on Radio Andy. Ding, ding, Thank ding, you, ding, 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 That's fantastic. How fun is that? We are now way past syndication. We should be getting our um, like <laughs> <laughs> royalty checks. They should be doubling. Finally, the number of episodes we've done exceeds the combined age of the three of us. <laughs> oh. Evil, evil. Oh, that is the vintage Tom Campbell, the vintage James St. James, and I am the vintage Benton Bailey. So should we just launch into the, uh, the, the COVID countdown? Let's yeah. do it. Number 10. Number 10, Tom. You guys... Um, there are signs of the apocalypse all around us, but one that cannot be ignored happened on what used to be my favorite show, still kind of is, I just haven't watched it in a couple of years, The Kardashians. The kim Courtney physical fight aired this past week. Did you see it? I saw bits of it on Twitter, and it looked absolutely just insane. What were they fighting about? I mean, it looks so real. It looks real. It is so real. That's what we love about the Kardashians. It's it's not hard to explain. It's basically Courtney, the quiet one, who, you know, basically doesn't want to do the show anymore. And she's been saying this for like two or three years and kind of like, I just want to spend more time with my children and blah, blah, blah. And she made a hundred million dollars. So she's done it. She could be out. And Kim kind of takes it personally and Chloe because they're raising children. They're doing the show and, you know, that whole thing. And so it was just, it was, part of me was disgusted and judgmental, which is so great of me. You know, one of my great attributes. But <laughs> they're only in their 30s. I thought they're in their 30s, their parents. I have, I'm, I'm much older than 30, but I'm sure I cussed out. And I don't know that I've ever physically come after my brother and sister. But we've had Awfully slap. That was Awful. like there was fingernails and arms. There was clapping. And my favorite part, because it's, it's sort of in three parts. And anyone within the sound of my voice, whether you've ever watched the Kardashians or not, you must watch this. Um, there's an amazing moment where you know Kim kind of charges uh, Courtney at the end of a white hall in one of their massive homes, and Courtney pushes her back, and Kim's shoulder hits the wall. It could have grazed the wall, comes off, and they keep going at it. Everyone's watching the fight. I'm watching the body makeup mark left on the white <laughs> wall. And I, and I know this is controversial to say. If you're just tuning in, this is a joke. But I haven't watched the Kardashians for a couple seasons. We were given, by the way, our Emmy for Best uh, Reality Competition by Kim and Kendall, who was watching. Kendall was watching the whole time, horrified. Um, uh, but... Um, <laughs> They wear a lot of, they're darker than they used to be. I'm not going to say the Kardashians wear blackface, but they're a lot darker than they used to be. Just this point. What was the fight about? Just sisterly resentment over many, many years. And Courtney sort of once again saying she wants off the show and that, you know, and you're a horrible sister and let me get, they're just, it's just all of that unspoken sibling Thanks. But if there's ever been siblings who have overthought and overspoke and overshared with each other, it's the Kardashians. It's hard to believe that after 10 years or 15 years of the show, that there's still unsaid things between them. You know, how much of it really was a little bit scripted, like you're going to get into an argument and you're going to say no. this, and this, and then it sort of got real as they were doing it. It's ugly. I don't, th- I don't go there. I think, it was a big thing. There's a statement afterwards that 
Courtney is taking a, 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 a distance herself from the show, shooting much less, only things that really import her. They made it so by the end of the show, they'd made up. And supposedly in real life, because this was shot a while ago, they've made up. But I'm telling you, it is a real fight. It is physical. Um, there's one of the mob wives, I never watched that show, but on Instagram, she does a play-by-play -play of their fight, talking about, they've never had a real fight in their life. Oh, 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 you know, it's, it's like she's going in. And I have to say, Chloe, supposedly Courtney's anger at Chloe than at Kim. Kim and, and Courtney had the fight, but Chloe was there and kind of took Kim's side verbally and was and was and, and the mob wife was like she's watching like she cares that she doesn't care beat the shit out of her she doesn't care so you know this is it i i am not a fan of wendy williams but i gotta say i'm sort of excited to t see wendy's take on this because she she you know is obsessed with the kardashians i i think the kardashians invented the internet they invented reality television <laughs> i give them credit for everything so no. I, I forgive them this moment of raw Brutal. And who invented the Kardashians? Paris Hilton. <laughs> okay, I buy that. I buy that. For me, it's all complicated by the whole Taylor Swift phone call thing because there's a new chapter in that too. I never understood quite what was revealed in that. Who did what? Did what? But there was really, it was just the other day. There was a new revelation, yeah. and because they showed the edited tape, and Kanye said that he told her everything that was on the track, and in fact, he didn't. And so right. she was surprised. And then Troy Sivan and yeah. Tyler Oakley and above everybody right. else just starts taking sides, and right. it, it right. becomes please, it is the beginning please. of World War Three. During All the right. time of, of isolation and, and home sheltering, please watch the Kardashians right. slap the shit out of each other. Please. That's Thursdays, eight p.m. at E Number Nine, James. Number nine. What do you got? Last week, I mentioned that I was reading Club King by, whoops, by Peter Gation, My Rise, My Rise, Reign, and Fall in New York Nightlife. And Peter Gation, you know, is somebody that I have known peripherally, at least for 35 years. He has been uh, an employer of mine for uh, seven or eight of those. Um, he's somebody that I just saw at parties and nightclubs over and over and over again. He's somebody that you know, Fenton. Um, you've worked for him as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, um, it's interesting. This this book is very interesting. He's um, he it's very it's very elegantly written. It's very it's beautifully written, and it's an interesting story of his you know early years growing up in Canada, very poor. Um, his first job, which or first, he had a store chain in Canada that sold jeans in the 1960s, and then he opened a club in Canada called the Aardvark, and he broke ba bands like Rush. He was the first person to ever book them. He then he moved to Florida and started a club there, Limelight there, and he had Grace Jones back in like 1975. Like I mean, he just he, he's always been sort of on the cusp of of cutting edge. And um, this is his story, and it's you know it ended poorly. It ended with the Giuliani taking him down during the Quality of Life campaign, and he was arrested and sent out of the country and um, deported. Interestingly, he doesn't spend a lot of time talking about the club kids' influence on his clubs, and he gives absolutely no credit to Michael, who helped create you know disco 2000 and a lot had a lot of input into a lot of the clubs he doesn't go there he gives michael two pages near the end of the book in which he basically says uh he was a, a fly swatting in my ear and um when his drinking and drugs got too much and he started smelling too bad i told him to go away and i fired him and that's basically all you get of Michael Haley. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and it's his book, and he gets to frame it any way he wants. Right. Like, is it a good read? What? Is it a good read? It is. It's a, it's a very interesting read. But he chooses to to spend a lot of time on his, his uh, contributions to the hip-hop community. And he had very influential nights at Palladium and Tunnel that were run by Sean Puffy Combs before Sean became famous. And Sean booked Jay-Z, Missy Elliott, Lil' Kim, uh, Tupac, Biggie, all these people before they became famous. And so 
that's really the legacy that that Peter is concentrating on in this book. And all, you know, that it's interesting because I did the doors of a lot of Peter's clubs, and I remember very vividly the 60-40 golden ratio that was taught that you needed to have 60% women, 40% men. And if it tipped the other way, then you would start having fights. You needed to have more estrogen than testosterone in the club. And I always got in trouble because I would let in nothing but cute boys. <laughs> and he would walk outside and say, James, there are three girls and 2,000 boys in the club. What the fuck are you doing? He would be, get furious with me. So I I have to laugh at all of that and, and hearing his sort of takes on everything. And this was before, James, we lived in a non-binary world. It's true. It's true. Well, <laughs> yeah. It, but he, you got to give him credit, too, because even in the mid-70s, right as disco was hitting, he hit upon the idea that you've got to have flamboyant gay people in your straight club and you've got to pay them to come and put them on a speaker and let them dance and do whatever they want because he called them before the club kids and everything he called them the excitables and you would get the excitables into oh. the club and that would make the club fabulous and so i mean the idea of merging straight and gay culture in clubs really didn't happen i uh, okay 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 but he was also slightly sinister looking figure because he had an eye patch right he only had one eye and well, i'm curious having read the book james do you feel he's a do you did you like him more because he wasn't a very well liked guy no. he was a much feared guy and a yeah. rather and he was a sinister presence. he was a ghostly presence in his own club he hmm. didn't partake he wasn't out there doing shots with people he wasn't partying or hanging in the, in the vip room no 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 he did not he he would go he would look at his club he would go to the back room in the near the in the nineties and two thousands, he had his drug problem, but he would take it to an uh, to a hotel. He would take it to the Four Seasons, and you never saw it at the club. You really didn't. That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, to be the four seasons. Four seasons. <laughs> no, but it's funny because early on he that the whole eye story. Like I thought it was a hockey accident in his in yeah. his teens. It wasn't. It was a stickball accident when he was like six years old. Um, but. He says he had a glass eye for about 10 years. And then in his teens, he realized that if he had a patch, he would look cool and intimidating to the other classmates. And he's realized right off the bat the power of the patch and how it gave him sort of people were a little intimidated by him after that. The power That's of right. the patch. Power. The power of the patch, yes. And he talks very much about how, um, you know, when he had a club in um, uh, Atlanta uh, before New York, Andy Warhol came and that sort of gave him a, like a stamp of being cool. And then other people started coming. Um, but he was never really, uh, he never really liked celebrities. He liked the idea that celebrities were at his club, but he didn't really need to hang out with them. It's this whole sort of weird thing. And you're never really sure if that's true or I don't know, but he, he's very conscious of the image that he had. That's Peter Gations, The Club King on Amazon. I'm definitely going to read it. Yeah. Um, um, number eight. Number eight. Uh, <laughs> James, this is completely for you. <laughs> okay. I watched this crazy show, <laughs> Motherland Fort Salem. Wait, and what? Motherland Fort Salem. It's on, uh, I think it's on the CW, but it's obviously it's now on Hulu. That's how I watched it. And it's like, um, it's all about these these witches. Um, okay, so the story, and this isn't really a spoiler, the basic story of Motherland is that at some point in American history, you know, in Salem, they burned and killed all the witches, right? Well, in this, they didn't do that. The witches instead were seen as sacred. The witches formed the armed forces, and the witches are now <laughs> defending America. They're the armed forces defending America against terrorists and terrorists. The, the terrorist organization is this weird thing called the spree or the scree. I don't know what they do. And if all they do is they blow up a balloon and pop it. And then people just commit mass suicide or the swimming pool. Everyone's in just freezes over and so <laughs> they, these witches and it's very lesbian. I mean, they're all women witches and they're training at a military academy, Fort Salem. And they, they learn uh, seeds. Seeds are spells, and they go, hum, you know, they like do 
murmurs and incantations and <laughs> each other through walls and they're having hot affairs. And so um, the reason I watched it is that, you remember we made the Menendez brothers. Um, one of the bit part actors was Kai Bradbury. He was the friend of um, Menendez, uh, Eric Menendez's friends. And he's, he's just in the film a little bit like in the pool scene, but we just stayed in touch and he's got this part big part in this in this series i was gonna say and, this doesn't seem like something that you would usually watch no right. no but in episode three it's the beltane at fort salem so episode three is basically they bring in men and they just fuck all the witches it's like <laughs> it's i'm sort of thinking what is happening to people it's no it's like it's so bonkers and inside out but the whole idea of Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just receipt. Maybe I'm just revealing my old-fashioned <laughs> sexism and misogyny by saying it's crazy to think that the army would be a couple of witches. All role reversal, the but whole thing, right? That's, Everything's turned on its head. Yes, exactly. And then you said this that's was on right. the CW. And I don't these witches, it. There's some... Oh, sorry. I don't think it's it may be not it is I think I think it's the CW or Blake will tell us. I I'm pretty sure it's it's anyway. It's one Blake of those it's kinda like here on the uh, on the private chat. Mm -hmm. We don't get to have Blake yell out anymore because he has this private chat section now. Do you well, see I'm, I'm still here. here. Well wait, because Fenton you seem to be like stopping and freezing. Is that happening to everyone or is it just me? I'm good. It's just you because I'm haven't really vibrant Blake? and you're all vibrant. Yeah. You haven't noticed that, Blake? So no, I haven't got a little bit. But... Oh. Okay, say it again. See, there's Blake. I can't the see other, The only other fabulous thing about uh, Mother and Fort Salem is, is that the leader, the only other thing I'll add about Fort Salem is that the leader of the covenant, the leader of the military armed forces, and basically the, the ruler of the USA, is, is a witch who's been around for a long time. And every now and then she gets a bit ill. So they have to get a young witch and she sort of sucks their body dry. And the, the, the young person is left all sort of old. And while well, the old witch is goes on to lead her lesbian army hmm. in the fight. Hmm. So, you know, check it out. It sounds like some people we know at World of Wonder. <laughs> oh, oh. I think we should take a break on that note then. God. <laughs> Blake, have you got a question for us? I do have a question. Um, the Real Housewives of New York just started recently. Ooh, yeah. Uh huh. And in the season premiere, Dorinda was recovering from a broken rib, suffered when she danced too vigorously with what Lau with which Wow Liberty at her house party. Okay. Wow. Okay, you're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy. That's a real housewives question. As you know, Tom, James, and myself, we're avid viewers of every episode of that. Real Sorry. Housewives. So, okay, we'll be right back after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hello, and welcome back to The Wow Report. I'm Fenton, uh, joined by Tom Campbell, James St. James, and Blake Jacobs. Howdy. So before the break, we had a question, a Real Housewives question, Blake. What was it? Yeah, um, Real Housewives of New York just started, and Dorinda, in the season premiere, was recovering from a broken rib, suffered when she danced too vigorously with what Wow Liberty at her house party? I'm going to say um, Big Frida because Big Frida is known for dancing vigorously. I'm going to say Frederick Eklund from Million Dollar Listing New York. Oh. I think Tom's right, but just I'm going to say Edward Bocknick because he's just friendly with all the housewives and reality <laughs> stars. No, it was RuPaul's drag race judge, Carson Kressley. Oh, oh. that's delightful. He apparently slung her across the terrace and it broke her rib. <laughs> Sounds like the Carson I know. <laughs> <laughs> now you might want to watch Real Housewives. You might also want to watch When the Beat Drops, which just launched this week on WOW Presents Plus. Uh, perfect viewing for hashtag 
SFTH. No, SDFH. Yeah, that's right. Stay the fuck home. home. Yes. Well, and the fact plus that it was, uh, when the beat drops is directed by Jamal Sims, director, choreographer, Wow Liberty. And it's what's is it? It's it Buckers. What are they called again? Bucking. That's Bucking. right. Bucking. Extremely vigorous dancing in point of fact. Yes. yes. In the south. Um, really fascinating. In the deep south, it's absolutely amazing and very warm-hearted and, and beautiful. It will make you laugh and it will make you cry. Wow Presents Plus, three ninety nine dollars a month, first week free. Join at wowpresentsplus.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> James? I mean, Tom. <laughs> I mean, Tom. What have we got for us, Tom, at number seven? Number seven. Guys, this is a quick one, but I think it's worth noting. Because the timeline for the COVID thing all happened, all started for me when I heard that not just Tom Hanks, but Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson had COVID. They were in Australia. We were in London at the time. Um, they showed great bravery. They sh they were the first celebrities really to share it. Um, they've gotten through it. They're back in LA. There was all this coverage that Rita and Tom were seen driving around LA. Um, and you know, Rita, uh, who, who also is you know a recording artist. Her songs went like number one on the iTunes chart, I think, the day of, of, of the original thing. And then she, um, while she was in captivity, in, 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 in uh, whatever they call it, um, she, <laughs> a, I'm trying to remember if, if, she, remembered, if only. <laughs> she remembered the Naughty by Nature song, uh, if she could remember the lyrics. Hey, yo, hey, yeah. yo, that one? Yes, and but and so she, with the social media, um, spit out all of the lyrics on her Instagram, and you know, very and, and got a lot of props. But the most important props of all, she got props from Naughty by Nature themselves, the original artists. Tretch, right? Remember, wasn't it, wasn't it his name Tretch yeah. that he was really hot? Yes. Didn't he have the padlock and chain around his neck? Was that his trademark? Possibly, Trump. possibly. But they're you doing a little BP. Oh no, not me! They've done a remix. We can maybe play it on the way out. Um, it's going to uh, help uh, go to a charity to raise money for COVID. Mm. Um, and it's just you know, who, who do they say? What well, didn't someone write like an opera while they were in Mozart? Or who who while in quarantine or in jail? Or wrote, Lear wrote King Lear. Yeah. yeah. Well, Naughty by Nature and Rita Wilson have remade. <laughs> you know what I have to say? Right. Life hands you a lemon, call Rita Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Also, you know, I mean, speaking of like celebrities and COVID and everything like that, we can point out that Lady Gaga just um, raised the help raise $35 million, I think, with her um, concert for oh, no. by COVID. So that's people are doing great things. They yep. are. They are. All right, let's move on to number six. Number six. James, what do you got? Well, you know, on the WOW Report, it's uh, we try and strike a balance lately during the <laughs> coronavirus thing of, of, you know, actual news about the coronavirus um, is silly little time wasters to help people get through the day and actual pop culture stories so that we all don't lose our mind and it's not coronavirus 24 hours a day. Which one is this? Well, this is a time waster. This is this is a little bit of a time waster that you, I'm doing. Um, in the past, I've done things like um, I, I don't know if you remember, but I did. I've done the gay essentials. It's a, a list list that I compile, and I did seventy or fifty movies that every gay man needs to watch. I did seventy five albums that every gay man needs in his library. Now, as you see behind me, I have a lot of books. I know a lot of books. I've read a lot of books. I'm doing. The 100 gay essential books that every gay man needs in his library. And there's not a better time to start hunting these down on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, bookfinder.com. Um, it's because um, you're I, saying to have actual books, right? You're yeah, saying these the are book. actual books. And I have made a list and it goes from highbrow like Rimbaud and Oscar Wilde's De Profundis and, you know, Proust uh, in search of lost time, like things that you can get to at any point in your life, but you probably should at some point down to, you know, like Paris Hilton's confessions of an heiress, Amanda Lepore's doll parts, Diane Brill's boobs, boys and high heels. I mean, I, I, I run the gamut here of, of things, for something, a little bit of something for everybody. And um, I just, I have children's books. I have like David LaChapelle, you know, books. Um, and I have been 
trying to write blurbs about each one as you know, and I've, like I said, I have a hundred, I've gotten 70 blurbs done. I still have 30 to go and wow. I'm hoping to get it up by the time this comes out. So you I have to get to it up. What? You have to get it up. You have to get I, it up. I will. Go, like, you, you can do half the list to start. Well, I was thinking of that too, but um, I, I think I can get it done tomorrow. I think I can get it done by, uh, and then get it up by Thursday or Friday. What's what the number one? What? Um, number one was, um, I think it was either Janet Mock or, uh, let me see, I have it. Well, I, I can't find Janet. it. Janet. Right okay. Oh. But I, I have like, um, uh, I think there was maybe like some Dan Savage in the, in the number one. Uh, Quentin Crisp is in there. Um, in the top tens, I remember. Any um, Joe Orton? What? Joe Orton. Oh, I he I think he's in the top twenty. The complete plays. Okay. I was uh -huh. just writing about him earlier. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, like I said, I'm I'm sort of excited for it, and I I encourage everybody to argue with me about people that I've included <laughs> and and tell me the things that the people that they'd put in, and I hope to just sort of get a dialogue going and get people reading during the the pandemic now is party monster in there well yes party <laughs> monster is in there as is freak show and i i put it like right between like rimbo and you know <laughs> proust and i'm saying that you didn't think that i was going to it in in fact i don't put any links to get the books in there because i just don't have the time or energy but i did put <laughs> links to get my books so yes you should hello Rita right, Wilson. I got to earn some coins. Learn, Rita Wilson. <laughs> Learn from Rita Wilson. <laughs> and I'm sure you've included the world according to Wanda, James. Oh, breaking yes. up. Going yes. Going to that, that, that will be number 10. Number Frozen. <laughs> Frozen. Such a liar. All right, let's move on. I can't wait for that list. It sounds very exciting. Um, number five. Number five. The entire Lord of the Rings cycle um, by Peter Jackson, directed by Peter Jackson, based on the J.R.R. Tolkien books. James, did you ever read Lord of the Rings? I did. When I was 25, I was I had a really horrible job at a shoe store that nobody ever came in. And I read all of Tolstoy, all of Dostoevsky, Lord <laughs> of the Rings. I did all of Sherlock Holmes. I like went on a bit. I got so much accomplished there. It was like a second college. And I loved it, even though, by God, it is a little boring sometimes. It is, and I have to say, I mean, that the epic, it, the the epic is. I think it, all three films totally runs for nine and a half hours, and um, then the Hobbit after that, which is another nine hours. Right, and he's he, um, he lost Tom, <laughs> sent him into a, a, a stupor. Um, it was all filmed. What was amazing about it? I think it was one of the most expensive films ever because they filmed one, two, and three back to back. So it was filmed over the course of about three years, all in New Zealand. I think. Looking back on it with perspective, I mean, I think they came out 2001, 2002, 2003, the three films. It, the acting's pretty, there's not a lot of acting. It's like people well, declaring, but, Lord so-and-so, son of doody do And the scenery is spectacular, but it, the dialogue is very announcing. Everything is always announced. And there's not much actual doing. I mean, there's a lot of battles, but there's not much sort of human interaction. And well, oh my God, Elijah Wood gets on my tits so badly. He just stands what? there. Little Doa, he's the lovable hobbit, but I found Who? him slightly. Uh, Elijah Wood. Wait a minute, because I was I was just ready to say, but this is Elijah Wood's greatest moment, and it's his big triumph, and he looks so beautiful, and he, those eyes, and he just you just want to hug him. He's so wonderful, and this Something, is just fantastic. The, the eyes are too wide; they're too blue, and he what? he speaks so, no too such thing softly. Is too wide, too blue. Uh, <laughs> I decided I don't like hobbits. That it's all about those <laughs> big hairy feet, and I'm not really into feet. So I have like, never been look. drawn to read or watch one one thing Hobbit. I don't know much about it. And it's it's a big black hole in my crossword puzzling, I must tell you that. <laughs> right. Lord Arundel, well, son of Boogaloo, for example. Yeah, you no, could, there so. is, and when you read the books, they, they sit around a campfire and they will sing <laughs> these songs that is like, uh, you know, uh, 
of of the old days and you get like 70 pages of who so and of a battle fought you know of elvish everybody's speaking elvish and elvish. singing elvish yes, and orc and Ooh. yes orc the other funny thing about it i mean i suppose the thing that has endured is it's andy circus who plays Gollum, precious you know yeah, yeah. Precious. amazing should have gotten an oscar mm, maybe i mean i i don't know i mean the, look the whole thing is the most amazing visual spectacular and uh, it's such an incredible achievement. Um, and if you have nine and a half hours, which many of us might do <laughs> over the next few years. I do later tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can take it in. That's the Lord of the Rings, a huge epic. Um, I think you can get it on, yeah, it's on Hulu. Everything's on Hulu these days. Hulu's the new happening platform. Well, wait until Quibi comes along and just destroys everybody else. Well, hold that thought because we'll be right back after the break. Um, Blake, do you have a question? I do have a question. Um, what actor or actress on Lord of the Rings accidentally stabbed themselves in the right thigh when filming? Mm, interesting question. Um, you're listening to The Wow Report on Radio Andy, our 200th episode, and we'll be right back after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with James St. James, Tom Campbell, Blake Jacobs, counting down the top 10 things that make us go wow. wow. Blake, we had a question. You had a question. I did. You spoke of the Lord of the Rings movies, which you can watch on Hulu while you're in quarantine. Um, this actor or actress accidentally stabbed themselves in the right thigh while filming. Who was it? Oh, well, I'm going to say it was Sean Astin. But who's the Resident Evil lady girl who was like the elf queen? Well, the elf queen is a good person, and she was Liv Tyler. Yes, Liv Tyler. I, it's either Sean Astin or Liv Tyler. We're all in Liv Tyler. About Liv, the thing about Liv Tyler is though, she just sits around the entire movie. She doesn't do anything. She doesn't even go into battle. She's like, just sort of... So I don't know how she's how playing, she with, the prop. playing with the prop. It's with the that. woman who, it's the girl who's the son of the king um, and she rides into battle. I know it's her, but I don't know her name. It was Liv Tyler. Oh. <laughs> and it was during the, if you want him, come and claim him sequence. I must oh, have missed the claim him sequence. I must have the whole thing again tonight. Wait, was that <laughs> like when they go to River, Rivendale or something? And they it, that's when you first see them and they have that. Oh, my God. The, the fairy elvish kingdom, you just die of boredom. They just, uh, they're just elves. They sit around immortal and talk oh, about. But how oh. beautiful. Hey, 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 enough time on this. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Linda. Okay, Linda. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We're going to go on. How to... beautiful Orlando Bloom was with that blonde hair. It doesn't get better than that. Question Number your four, edging. Tom Campbell. Number four. Uh, have you guys uh, got your free subscription to Quibi, the new network, the new Jeffrey Katzenberg Met Whitman network? No, no but you're not alone. It's, <laughs> it's just launched. We've been hearing about it for quite a while as of all of Hollywood. And Jeffrey Katzenberg of DreamWorks fame and everything else and Meg Whitman who used to run Yahoo! They came together, got a billion dollars investment, spent a billion dollars in programming to make Quibi is short for quick bites for 10 minutes or less content that you it's only on mobile and you can watch it. The big gig is the big the big hook is you can watch it horizontally or vertically. Not a big hook. It and sounds like you aren't a fan. Well, it's it's everyone suspicious. Part of me thinks with young people here, the whole thing is it was all uh, the whole notion is there's this white space in high end streaming mobile. Even though all of the place nine, all of the other versions of this awesomeness TV, all those other things have crashed and burned. While while wow presents plus has continued to grow and grow and grow and grow for three ninety nine. So for four ninety nine, you get Quibi. You can get 90 days free. I'm on the 90 days free. Uh, I think it's like uh, it's like 4.99 or more for Quibi if you 5.99 if you don't get commercials and 7.99 if you do, which is more than Disney Plus. 
And the reviews are in and people are a little confused. It's something new. So maybe people come around to it, but there's something dis I've, I've only watched, I watched, there's a show called uh, Nikki Fresh starring uh, once a wild liberty, Nikki, Nikki, Nicole Richie, which oh. candidly, James, is just uh, Nicole. Nicole. We have a show called Candle and Nicole, which you can watch for free on AOL. Uh, and uh, it's the same show. Um, I thought there's quite a few sort of WoW Presents well, plus wait, type because, shows on the Quibi. I thought the Chrissy Teigen thing looked like fun. It's, it's, uh -huh. you should, everyone should watch with their own clear mind. I'm giving it, I think I read something and maybe it's changing quickly, but only like it, it started to, uh, earlier this week and initially only 300,000 people signed up. And how ironic that the white space was, you're on the bus, you're standing in line at Starbucks, you're commuting, you're at work and you just need a little break. And here's the six to 10 minute quibby, quick bite. But the fact is, and you can't get it right now on your computer, you can't get it projected to your television. So you're forced right now in in this weird time where we're all stuck inside watching. I have a little carpal tunnel from switching my phone from this, <laughs> to this from this to this. How is that? Is that novelty? Does that is that fun doing that? Does it no. like make a well, yeah. wait a minute though? Wait a minute though. In mm. Quibi's defense, yeah. Snapchat is doing the same thing, and I have a deal with Snapchat to do my book Freak Show in 10 minute uh, episodes. So How I'm much? hoping against hope that by God this format will survive so that I can make some damn money. Sure. Which book is that, James? Which book? Which Freak of your book? Oh. I don't know if there's a format short enough for you, James. No, I'm kidding. The, um, the, that was a joke. Um, but you know, there's TikTok, there's lots of short form entertainment. Right. And you would think it'd be a no brainer. But you didn't spend a billion. I don't think they're paying you a billion dollars. Close, close, very close. <laughs> I think that the flaw in this in this equation may be that it's it's designed for the kids who watch on their phones, which is great. But everything's got celebrities in it, and I'm not sure that the kids who watch on their phones are that interested in the celebrities. I think the celebrities belong to film and television, like Spielberg, and I think and you're then, absolutely right. I think the, that's the, what. That's the great thing about TikTok is that it's created its own celebrities. And I think that the kids want to create their own celebrities. I don't mm -hmm. think they need Nicole Richie or, or Chrissy Teigen. And you should and check it out, James, yeah. as it re relates to what you're about to do. Because in formats, there's some format shows like game shows. And because they're only six minutes long, they get really redundant and repetitive right after each other, right? So you sort of need maybe in scripted, which I, there is a lot of scripted. There's a ton of, of really high quality, high name stuff. But with scripted, I think you need to find a way, which could be tricky or not, to like mm -hmm. make me go to the next level, make me go to you know, or take a turn around the corner. Because if it's just, I think it's probably less problematic and scripted. But I have I'm gonna start watching scripted stuff tonight. Well, you, you 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 need every you need it to be like a, a mini soap opera where you you have cliffhangers after cliffhanger after cliffhanger to keep you going yeah. and keep you scrolling through. In the reality stuff, the most successful thing was kind of um, uh, they MTV uh, remade Singled Out, but they also remade Punked, which has some issues because the, the the punks aren't that good. But at least with Punked, it's sort of like six minutes about the time you need for a Punked, and then you go on to the next one. But the other stuff, it just presents a whole new set of challenges. And listen, Jeffrey Katzenberg and my women are very smart people and they're they're very well financed. And I, you know, we have we know people over there who are pitching them. I shouldn't be bad talk mapping them. But there it's it is getting mixed reviews um online, getting mixed reviews by the press and by this the variety and Hollywood reporter. So it's an it's a new day, and I'm making making the world know that Quibi is available. You can get well, it free for 90 days and make the decision yourself. But Tom, have you have you guys pitched at Quibi? Yeah. Oh, okay. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving along. Moving Here we along. are. Listen, if you don't feel like watching Quick Bites, can I recommend that you watch the Vivian Takes on Hollywood? It just launched this week on Wow Presents Plus, which is uh, the Quibi, but the cheaper version of Quibi because it's only three ninety nine a month, and you get the first week free, of course. So. That's the Vivian. She's the winner of Drag Race UK. She is absolutely fan fucking fantastic, and uh, her winner's prize because in the with, uh, uh, the BBC in the UK you can't give prizes. So the prize is she came to Hollywood, had her own series on Hollywood, and it's priceless and hilarious. And, the Vivian uh, takes on Hollywood, and it right. meets with a different kind of wow, celebrity and celebrity each uh, each episode, and hilarity ensues, and it might. It just might lead to, to some spinoffs like 
you know, the Vivian takes on Phoenix or something. I don't know. And she'd go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, James, number three. Number three. What made you go, wow? The brain that wouldn't die. Hi, um, I've been out of you. I've been watching a lot of Turner Classic movies. Me too. And I have sort of fallen into a hole of old horror from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And I like the Mummy Returns, and you know the Werewolf and Frankenstein meet Abbott and Costello, and Zombies on Broadway, which was really actually very good. Um, but this is this one that I saw the other night is called The Brain That Wouldn't Die, and it was made in 1958, but it was so scary and so lurid that they had to hold off from, from um, releasing it until 1962, until the times had changed and people could accept it, because it was so scary. And there's this mad scientist, a mad doctor who's doing all these amputee-like experiments, and he's driving home with his girlfriend one night, and they get into a car accident, and she's decapitated, and he quickly quickly grabs her head and runs home and he puts it like in a lasagna pan full of water <laughs> <laughs> and he attaches. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. He attaches all these like phone cords and Bunsen burners and test tubes to her. And even though she doesn't have a, a vocal cords or a throat or lungs, she starts talking and she's furious. And she's like, <laughs> how dare you? This is an abomination unto God and you shall fry forever in the pit, pits of hell. Blah, blah, blah. And she's just furious. Well, he decides that he's going to get a body for her. So, and this is where it gets so, this is so tawdry. He starts going to strip clubs and these are like 1950s strip clubs and the girls are like grinding and there's like wailing sax music and everything. And then he goes to a bikini contest to find the best body. And it's all shot from above so that you get the bullet bras like in your face. And it's like, it is so seedy and fabulous. And then he discovers this, this woman who's like a fetish model and she does um, portraits in her, in her living room. And they're like all these sweaty, like pervs with cameras taking pictures of her in her like bikini. And he finds her and he just, and he takes her back and he's going to kill her and take and saw off her you know, head so that he can put his girlfriend's head on her. But there's also a monster in the, that he's created in the basement and the monster is trying to get out and the monster and the girl, the head in the pan have like a psychic link. And that's all I'm going to tell you because it just go, it gets crazier and crazier from there, but it is so good. And like, it's not like night of the living dead where it's sort of like verite sort of black and white. And there's all this wailing sax music. That's like porn music from the sixties. There's so many things about it to love. And the fact that it's like this, the, the girl's name is, um, uh, wait, wait, uh, hold on a second. Jan, the, the model, the girl the, whose head is in the pan, and she's Jan in the pan. <laughs> and it's like literally, it's a lasagna pan with a head in it. <laughs> they used to, when I was growing up on WLVI TV Channel 56 in Boston, the, on Sundays, they would have movie blocks, and they would, when they ran that movie, they'd run it as a double feature with They Saved Hitler's Brain. Is that the one with Nancy Reagan? Starring Nancy Reagan. Thank you. <laughs> yes. It's funny because there are a lot of them, and it's sort of like a Frankenstein story. You know, I mean, it's an oft told tale, <laughs> but there is something really magical about this one. And I just, I really thought it was the most fun I've had since I've been in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to move on now. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Watch that. The, what? Uh, watch. The brain that wouldn't die. It's it's for free on Tubi, right? Tubi, T U B I. And probably also you can get it on the Turner Classic Movie app and uh, on demand as well. Tubi, not to be confused with Quibi. Okay, um, number two. Number two. Um, we've been having sort of movie nights with Nolan and showing him all these films, and we watched the other night. We watched two films actually. We watched uh, Panic Room. Oh. And flight plan, and these are two Jodie Foster vehicles. One's from two thousand two, um, Panic Room, and Flight Plan is from two thousand five. They are almost the same movie. In Panic Room, Jodie Foster is newly divorced on her own with her young daughter, and she moves into a new house that has a Panic Room. And in Flight Plan. Jodie Foster is a newly widowed woman with her young daughter who's flying on a brand new plane. 
Yes. I just wanted to point out that the Panic Room was the first time we ever saw a young Kristen Stewart. Yes, absolutely. Kristen Stewart is the daughter of Jodie Foster. And in the other film, it's Marlene Lawston. I don't know what happened to her. Um, but they're really good films. And they're really good for a COVID pandemic because they're all about sort of paranoid. You're on lockdown. You're in a very confined space. And it may may not sound like on flight plan being on an airplane is a confined space, but the plot is so chilling because Jodie Foster's newly widowed, husband's coffin is on board, the daughter's sitting next to her, she falls asleep, wakes up, and the daughter is gone. <gasps> and where is her daughter? And she's freaking out and she's telling the passengers, where, have you seen my daughter? And everyone's like, no, you didn't come on with a daughter. And the, the lady on a train, right? The the great Alfred Hitchcock, right? And the flight crew is like, no, we don't have her on the on the passenger manifest. And it's it's a great thriller and who done it, but with this sort of paranoid, claustrophobic thing. And both films sort of trade on the idea of is Jodie Foster losing her mind? And they revolve around these very tight, confined spaces. Um, I have to say, Panic Room's pretty good too, because you'd think at first, mother okay, and her take refuge in a panic room where's the movie gonna go you know right. but it's really great because the the villains who break into the house that cause them to retreat into the panic room what they need is in the panic room ah! is, yeah. it is it Pirel? is it hand is it hand sanitizer is that what they need <laughs> if there's all your covid supplies it's really that both films are really good I, I suppose Panic Room is directed by David Fincher and has this, this amazing cinematography and these amazing devices to really up the tension. And the interesting thing about Flight Plan is that it was 2005, which was, it was a double-decker 747, and it was literally the same year that the A380 first flew. But this is a, this is a sort of mock-up of what that plane might be, and it's a little sci-fi and weird, but it's... Well, I also imagine that in 2005, we were still having a little post-traumatic stress from 2011, from 9-11. So yeah. that probably fed into that. I'm interested in this, we, Blake, you can cut out, but because um, I don't know if you've ever seen Lady on a Train, uh, Fenton? Uh, no. You've so. seen, have you seen it with Dame Margot? What is her name? Dame May Whit now. Um, she was Miss Marple in all the British universities. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, so how did it end? Is it, is it the same sort of thing? Tell me the ending. Of uh, Flight Plan or Panic Room? Fla flight Plan. Because the daughter alert, alert. Alert. In, in, both, in both instances, Jodie Foster is a very smart, resourceful woman. She's a damsel in distress, but incredibly clever and acute. And so continually underestimated by male forces who think... Like she's Clarice she's Starling. Exactly. And so it just so happens that her character on this in flight plan, she designed the plane that they're flying on. <laughs> so <laughs> they kind of shouldn't have messed with her. And <laughs> but it's uh, the, 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 the sort of plot hinges around the fact that the, the, the baddies realize that you could smuggle a bomb onto a plane in a coffin because they don't X-ray remains in mm. coffins you know, before putting them on the plane, but I'm sure that's changed by now. And where has the, where was the daughter all along and why why was nobody believing her? He was down below decks in the, which is also fascinating. I've always been fascinated by those sort of hidden areas of the plane, the, the cruise quarters and then the luggage court where they put the luggage and the bags. It's like a whole, you can imagine it's a lot of space down there. Since well, that's how James and that. I usually travel. <laughs> Down with the and goats, but Benton, you've always had a bit of a plane obsession. Yes, it made me nostalgic for just wanting to go to the airport and get on a plane. It's <laughs> 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 a trap. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on. Let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll reveal the number one thing that goes well. But before I let you go, I just must remind you tonight, eight PM VH1. What is it? RuPaul's Drag Race. Start your engines. That's right. That's right. And this is Wow Report Radio Addie, Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. <laughs> What's happened to James? He thinks you've been taken over by some little <laughs> earth. I thought Marilyn Manson had joined us. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so we're going to reveal, right, the number one thing that makes us go, wow, what is it? Number one. I'm hijacking this one because we were coming up with topics and Blake was helping and we were trying, we we're weighing what should it be. And Blake said as an aside, something very important about his sister. And I think Blake's sister is number one this week. Blake, uh -huh. what is well, I'm not just my sister. I mean, all of them, but I'm very proud of her. She is going into the front lines, into the eye of the storm. She's going to New York City to do travel nursing for a little while. And um, yeah, she's she's only signed up to go for four weeks right now. Only but, four weeks. Right. Yeah, but, I mean, re a really rough four weeks ahead of her. Yeah. What's it's she's. You know, she just feels like she needs to do it. She's got a baby at home, but I mean, four weeks. What is well, she expecting to do? What What do you think will what work will she be doing? Well, she works in the ER, and she's going to be in Inwood, so that's like North Manhattan. So now, what's happening to your nephew? My niece. Yeah, she um she she'll be fine. She has her dad at home, and and both grandparents, both sets of grandparents. So. But I also want to thank just all the other frontline workers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not just my little sister. There's, you know, even the grocery store people who are there to. Everybody, everybody. Her name is. Her yeah. name is Becca Jacobs. Hi, Becca. Thank you. Thank you, Becca. Yeah. Thank you, Becca, going to New York in this hardest time. It is genetic. They say it like on CNN, and but it's genetic people that have the inkling to first become a nurse and to, to, to do all that service every day in their job anyway and put themselves at risk. But then people that, you know, go toward the danger and go toward yeah. the need, it's, um, it's, it just breaks, it moves me and breaks my heart. As Tammy Faye would say, run to the raw. That's what mm -hmm. she would Run to the raw. Yeah. And she's traveling from, is she still living in Arkansas? She's in Arkansas right now. She's yeah. going to. She's a nurse there, right? Yes, she's a nurse there. There's nothing for us to complain about in any way, right? <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about what what's going on in Arkansas. Is there is there a, a lot of COVID nineteen cases there? What's what is? is I'm not too sure. Out? I'm not too sure about the number of cases, but I do know that they are one of five states who have not issued a stay at home. Oh wow! Because they have a Republican governor. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I'm worried that. Uh, Arkansas is going to become a war zone in a couple of weeks. Who knows? Well, we, I mean, they, they do say that this week and next week are going to be some of the hardest. Um, and it does seem to be moving uh, everywhere. So, I mean, Godspeed, everyone. Yeah. Particularly one of the, the bright lights is that in some of these areas like Arkansas, they're just less densely populated. And that seems to be a, a factor for viral vectoring. So the, the well, yes and no. I mean, we are seeing in in a lot of rural areas that it is happening. People that places where they said it wouldn't. Like, I mean, it's there's really no rhyme or reason to a lot of. I mean, you think you figured it out, and you you don't. It just keeps changing. The other good thing, James, is that it does seem as if the stay at home and the self isolating and and that stuff, the social distancing, is working because they, with in terms of California, they seem to have certainly flatten the curve. Mm -hmm. You know. Don't take chances, people. Stay home. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, I went to, um, I'm so mad at myself. I went to 7-Eleven the other day and I had a mask on. I needed to get some nibbles. I, I was just out of everything. And I didn't feel like going to the grocery store. So I went to 7-Eleven. And as I'm walking out, I put my hand on the door and then I touched my eye like immediately afterwards. And I thought, oh my God, that's it. You're never, that, that's, I, I am so furious at the things that I know I should be doing and I didn't do it. It's I've been very touch your face. I've been carrying around Purell in my car, and yeah. um, I try to use my shirt to open, open things. doors. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, or if I can, I try to have a, a like a Clorox wipe in my hand when I open the door. I can't even find any Clorox wipes yeah, in Purell have. anywhere. Yeah, minimize risk. Minimize risk. You know that that's all. Yeah. That's all best we can do. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, James. Wow. Thank you, Blake. Uh, stay safe. Uh, same time, same place next week. Yes, yes please. I all enjoy right. these. I, this is all I need in the world. Until then, don't go out. But do something that makes the world go wow. wow.